Good evening. I'd like to call to order the September 28, 2017 regular monthly meeting of the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees. First item, uh, second item is roll call. Joe Carroll. Present. Aubrey Strauss. Present. Jason Greenleaf. Here. Rob McSorley. Present. Nick Rico. Here. I'm Charles Anderson, and Ben Viola had called to advise us that uh, he'll miss tonight's meeting due to um, some family business he had to take care of. Uh, we have a quorum. Next item is approval of the minutes of the August 24th, 2017 regular monthly meeting. So moved. Second. Anybody have corrections or omissions to uh, add? Yes, Nick. Um, yes, on page two, last paragraph, third line starts, one Mr. Hughes had thought of. Um, uh, that could have been redone several ways, but it might mean one solution Mr. Hughes had thought of. Okay. Yeah. So, one. Or one thought Mr. Hughes had. <laughs> Mr. Hughes had only I would one thought. Say, I, would suggest that, I would suggest we go with uh, one solution Mr. Hughes had thought of. Okay, anything else? No. Nope. Any others? All right. Uh, if not, all those in favor of the motion? Anyone opposed? <coughs> Any abstentions? One abstention. Aubrey, because you I'm weren't you present. weren't in yep. attendance. Uh, okay. Uh, Superintendent's operations report, David. Uh, a copy of the monthly report of operations for the month of August is included in your packet. And our average effluent flow for the month was 1.21 million gallons a day. Our from quality was well within our permitted limits. We averaged. 96% uh, BOD removal and 97% TSS removals with concentrations of 14 and 9 milligrams per liter, respectively. Copy of the pump station flows for the month of August is included in your packet. We had one event with zero flow uh, reported at Post Away. Uh, this, we determined that this was the cause of, uh, of a failing ultrasonic, which we have since replaced. Uh, we have been conducting some H2S monitoring at several key locations within the collection system. The results are as follows. Um, at pump station one, force main terminus, we have an average concentration of 29 milligrams per liter with a peak of 213 milligrams per liter. These were collected over a week time at each location. Uh, at Pine Point and Primrose <coughs> Drop Manhole, we had an co average concentration of 32 with a peak concentration of 395 milligrams per liter. And at uh, Pump Station 2, Force Main Terminus, we had an average concentration of 14 with a peak of 167 milligrams per liter. Um, <coughs> We have purchased, in, in consideration of some of these numbers, we have purchased uh, and will be installing two red valve checkmate inline check valves at the drop manhole in Primrose to prevent some of the migration of the H2S up the, up the collection system in that area. Um, as, as part of doing this, we identified the need to re replace or refurbish uh, two manholes. Um, one at the terminus of pump station one force main and in that drop manhole. Uh, we are evaluating options including dig and replace, cementitious coating, and epoxy coating, or a combination of, of the two. We got here a, uh, a brick sample of uh, an epoxy coating uh, of, one of, the, of one of the vendors that we're evaluating. But uh, we will be doing budgeting this uh, for next year. Dave, could I, could I just interrupt you there before you go on? Um, because there's been some concern um, regarding odor issues um, at pump stations one and two in the system in between. Um, I, I think it would just be a good idea to spend a minute just to clarify um, the range, the, the extreme range of these numbers and the additional benefits for odor control that we hope to gain from the H2S um, 
mitigation measures that we're, that we're implementing. So if you could just spend a minute and do that for anybody who might be viewing, that would, that would yep. be helpful. Uh, um, certainly. Um, the H2S concentrations uh, that I just uh, presented are um, extremely elevated and um, certainly uh, would result in uh, mul multiple things. Number one, they, it, it's a very strong odorous um, gas. Uh, and at these concentrations, you certainly sell, uh, sell, uh, sell, smell them. Um, it's a very corrosive gas, which is the reason for the eroding of our concrete in our manholes. Um, in, in those areas, in those two manholes, a good half inch of the concrete is gone. Um, uh, structurally, the, you know, the, the manholes are about four inches overall in thick. There's plenty of material there to rehab them with. And so what we are doing in that area is, and why we've been collecting this data is to get a better handle on, number one, the severity of the problem, and number two, how our um, abatement program is, how effective our abatement program is. So right now we have a uh, one system installed and up and running at what we call pump station two, which is the pump station at the parking lot of Easton Trail on Pine Point Road. And that system is a system to abate the odor. In other words, it's it, it put there to treat the odor. Um, and it is a system manufactured by a company called Vapex. And what it does, it generates a fog of um, uh, ozone that we inject inside the wet well and it scrubs and Removes the uh, removes and treats the odors with it in place within the wet well. So uh, at this point, when there is venting coming out of that wet well, um, you don't smell um, the uh, uh, the very strong sewer gases that you used to smell in the past. Um, I would say right now it's probably about 80% effective in treating the odors that we have there. I was just there on Tuesday with uh, another uh, operator from Lewis and Auburn who was interested in seeing the piece of equipment. Um, and, you know, we stood actually within 10 feet of the vent pipe of the, the wet well for a good 30 to 45 minutes just having a conversation. And prior to the system being put in place, you could not do that. Um, the fire chief uh, who drives down um, Pine Point all the time has even commented to me that he has noted that uh, whatever we're doing, he doesn't smell that pump station as he drives by anymore. Uh, we do have to do some additional uh, modifications to the system. Uh, we're going to be changing the location of the vent pipe and bring it up uh, to the, the peak of the roof. And there is a, um, uh, a terminus piece to the vent that we'll be installing that will pre prevent any of the ozone from coming on out. The majority of the odors you smell right now is the ozone smell versus uh, H2S smell. Uh, the other uh, piece of treating or addressing odors in a wastewater system is to help prevent the generation of the odors in the first place. What we're doing at two is actually abating the odors, we're scrubbing the odors. Uh, the, the odors are generated between what we call pump station one, which is located at, at uh, Snow's Canning Road, uh, right across from the clam bake. Uh, <coughs> that, that pump station services the, the Pine Point Peninsula. Uh, and um, the, the, it has a very long force main, and which provides a long detention time when where hydrogen sulfide is generated. Uh, the, the technology that we will be using there is one that will uh, elevate the oxygen level within the force main to prevent the generation of the hydrogen sulfide. What's happening, how the biology works is the the bacteria is looking um, for an oxygen source and um, when there is no elemental oxygen, it goes for the next bacteria, which is, uh, and it generates the hydrogen sulfide. 
So uh, that system where uh, it's, we have the equipment, we have some additional engineering that needs to be done to determine how all the parts and pieces are going to fit together down there, and then we'll have the installation going on. Uh, uh, hope and the plan is to have it up and running before um, uh, next season, uh, when the, order, the next order control season is uh, starts. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a two two prong approach: one to to, to stop or uh, reduce the generation of odors, and two to abate whatever odors uh, are conveyed down to the pump station too. Thank you, dude. I hope that wasn't too long. No, that was fine. Uh, I, I think it was just important to let folks know that we have a program underway to try and resolve that problem. And the nature of Scarborough system from the time it was initially designed and, and constructed has extensive lengths of force main uh, from pump stations to uh, gravity lines. And so this is not a new problem uh, for us, but uh, as the technology gets better to deal with this, we're more able to make advances on it, and I think we'll continue to continue to do that as we're able to. Uh, okay, sorry to interrupt. I think you were on, uh, on E, which uh, actually was addressing the odor issues. I think, you know, um, I'll, I'll read through it. We continue to get odor complaints from the area of the Primrose Iris Drive neighborhood. We did have some initial startup issues uh, that have been addressed and still need to make some more tweaks to the system. And as I said, just said, I feel the system's about 80% effective at this point. Um, I, you know, I just want the trustees to know um, I do respond to every odor complaint down there. I've, been, I've walked up and down Iris and Primo's Drive probably 20, 25 times since this thing has uh, been installed. And um, let's see. We, you know, as I say, we uh, do have some modifications to the venting system that we will be doing at Pump Station 2, which I think will also improve uh, the situation down there. Um, moving on, uh, Scarborough Sanitary District was selected as one of the tour facilities for the New Hampshire operator who is participating in the Maine uh, Water Environment Association Operator Exchange Program. Stephen Simeon. Uh, from Concord, New Hampshire, spent about two hours at our facility along with Mac Richardson, uh, the main director of uh, NUIA. Is that right? Mm -hmm. He's it? the state director for NUIA of Maine. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, Glenn assisted me in conducting the tour. Although uh, new operator, I was impressed with Stephen. He was a great selection for an exchange program. Um, he's going to do very, very well as an operator. Um, Carl and Paul have um, completed the installation of new VFDs at the River Pump Station, the Nonsuch River Pump Station, and Pump Station Number One, uh, which is the one at Snows Canning Road. Uh, Carl and Paul have completed the installation of the fog rod level control systems, uh, Pump Station Two and Pump Station Three. These are the secondary level control systems that we've been installing throughout our, all of our uh, pump stations. Uh, the sewer service at 10 Flintlock Drive backed up into the basement of the home. The cause of the backup was that the sewer service itself was plugged. EcoClean tried to clear the plug but got their rod stuck and had to excavate. What we found was a cracked sewer service. The cause appears to have been that the foreign sewer service had been laid directly on ledge. Um, we videoed the main line sewer to confirm there was no blockage within the main line sewer at the Y for the sewer service. That's our current policy now, anytime we get a call like this. Uh, there was a sewer service blockage at 189 US Route 1, and it, and it appears that the outlet of the grease trap was blocked. Again, we videotaped the main line to confirm the blockage wasn't us, um, and uh, we worked with the owner on that. Surely. Can I ask a question? Yes, Ron. Uh, 189, what's the restaurant that does? That is Dimitri's. Uh, okay. Um, question. Um, do they provide reports on their clean out of their grease trap on a regular basis, or is that part of the policy that we're all looking at? That's part of the policy we're looking at. At this time, we don't require reporting of their cleaning. Okay. So that would 
probably help that situation. Yes. Thanks. Uh, DMRQA results can pass the laboratory performance testing for fecal coliform. And uh, we continue with our sludge hauling pilot study uh, to facilitate better distribution within the, within the trailer. We cut a couple of new discharge sheets in the screw conveyor. We continue to be at the higher end of the uh, target tonnage, and there does seem to be a marked reduction in odor at the plant as a result of this program. And finally, uh, on the 26th, Ken celebrated his 40th year with the district. Oh. Remarkable. <laughs> um, great. Thank you, Dave. Any questions for the superintendent? Aubrey? Yeah. So I was just kind of curious. We're talking about potentially doing rehabilitation at a couple of manholes, and, and one of the um, solutions that is being looked at is epoxy coating. Back in, I'm going to say around 2007 or so, <coughs> when we did the cured in place pipeliner for Black Point Road, we rehabbed two manholes using Warren Environmental System epoxy, which was under copyright at the time, and that copyright has now been released. So I'm wondering, um, is that, um, so how have those two manholes fared? Uh, we, for example, Fog Road had a huge amount of uh, damage again to the cementitious structure from corrosion that was coming into that system. Has that been inspected? I'm kind of curious as I did that project how that has held. And the second question, I guess, is how these new products compare to the Warren environmental epoxy. Are they as good? Are they um, better? Do they cure faster? And you might not know the answer to either question. I'm just kind of curious, like how the other epoxy has. Time. Yeah, I, I don't know that. I've uh, actually not, I, I was vaguely aware of that and had forgotten. I think uh, there was another manhole too, Fog yeah. Road for sure. And I think uh, you did you did inspect the manholes on Black Point Road though. We did for this recently. Or? Yeah, have, didn't didn't when we discussed it, I thought you had indicated that you had uh, taken a look at the ones that were epoxy coated to see how they were No, you out. asked me, yeah, um, when we met, we were talking about um, if we had looked at Black Point Road, I said we've looked at one section of Black Point Road, which from the, um, the Old Grange Hall, mm -hmm. where our school is located, and we went down one, one length of a run. Um, at the time, the flows were quite heavy, and, and Ted Berry was able to float a boat down there with a camera. Mm. Um, and that was, but they weren't uncomfortable doing any more at that point. And so that was the only section we've looked mm -hmm. at. And it looked, that section looked fine. Yeah. It would require uh, traffic control, I think, yeah. to look at the one that's at Fog Road. I yeah, think it's it, it, the other one. So okay, so there's the one at Fog Definitely Road itself. Definitely at Fog Road. And I feel like we may have done the one. Um, uh, where Pump Station 2 comes onto Black Point Road 2. Well, that that's a weird manhole. That's got that weird platform in it, so maybe we didn't end up doing Pump that. Pump Station 2 comes on where? On the, uh, the, the East Turner Road, doesn't it? Oh, I'm sorry, Pump Station 4. If I said 2, I didn't four, mean 2. I yeah. meant 4. On yeah. the Black Point, up Black over the Braille Road yeah. Bridge. So. Right. Okay, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'm just I'll curious. start probing and, and I'll look into those. Yeah. And I'm not aware of the warrant. Probably. I'm just personally, like, in terms of when you have this much, you said there's 2 inches of material loss. That seems half inch. Half inch. Oh, I so there's two inch of concrete that's gone. So um, I was I was thinking that's a much better fit for like an epoxy product than a cementitious product. No, the, the, I've, I'm a big fan I've of the epoxy. Pretty much uh, cross off the cementitious product. Uh, as an you said a half inch of concrete is half gone. Inch. Mm -hmm. I'm so dramatic in my notes. Look at that. Two inches <laughs> of concrete. <laughs> gone. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, just following up, Mr. Chairman, yes. uh, I've had a little bit of experience with uh, composite liners where you start <coughs> with cementitious and put epoxy on. Yeah, the, yeah, hybrid. Mm -hmm. yeah, the hybrid system. And, you know, for the most part they work, but you've got to watch out for delamination. That's, that's mm -hmm. what I was going to caution you on. So, you know, from what I've seen so far, it's just a means of saving some money. And Good to know. you use them in places where the sulfides are as high as we found there? Uh, Hard to say. Well, the terminus manhole that I had lined was missing an inch and a half to two inches of concrete. So it had to be built back up as well as lined. <coughs> so that has since held up, except for the final epoxy liner has delaminated. It had to be reapplied a few years later. Mm -hmm. the, the H2S was much worse than that. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. 
Okay, uh, Joe. Uh, I apologize. Uh, I meant to get down to you earlier, but while I was away uh, for training this past month, I did receive some correspondence, and I don't see it here, so I'm assuming they never reached out to you. Um, but was there an order issue in the area of uh, Sandpiper or Kingfisher, like the beginning of the month? Is that us, by chance? Sandpiper no. Cove? Yeah. Condominiums? There was just uh, yeah. I never, a I large never. odor, and then it kind of went away over the next couple of days with a lavender smell, so I didn't know if that was something we were treating. No, we didn't. I'm not aware of that. You didn't get any complaints? No. Okay. Was this last month? Yeah, I got an email from a couple of the residents. Um, so you didn't report it today? I was away. I just got it today. Oh, okay. That's how old, how, how far back was the email? Uh, very beginning of the month, because I was in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but a lavender odor, huh? Well, there were. Well, at first it was uh, a sewer odor, a pungent sewer odor, and then it was in the evening, and then. Yeah, there were, you know, I, it could have been, but there were also a lot of very strong marsh odors about sure. that about that time, especially right. in the evenings when the temperature was starting to drop. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, not sure sandpiper? what. Sandpiper. Yeah, sandpiper. That's a private system, right? Uh, sandpiper has a private system that discharges into our system. Yeah. Pumps up and discharges into yeah. us. But I think the answer is we're really not, we weren't, we weren't aware of an odor problem there. Um, I'm not sure what would cause a profound odor of that type in that location from our system. Yeah. But uh, could, have been, ask, could have been could have been natural. Follow it up. Yeah, could have been naturally occurring. Yeah. Very good. Thanks. We get lots of complaints uh, or inquiries when the marsh is kind of boiling off mm -hmm. different aromas. So. Uh, all right. One Is thing that I, it for questions? One thing I would like to add with regard to these concentrations, and we have been using this as a, um, uh, as a training exercise to just to remind our staff that this is the reason why we have our confined space program and why we've got manholes and and uh, because, you know, th these would be lethal concentrations. Lethal concentrations for people entering the manhole. Entering the manhole. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <coughs> okay, so we don't need to go into a discussion about confined space entry and hydrogen sulfide gas in confined spaces at this point in time, I don't think. Um, next item is correspondence, and there is no correspondence. On the item, unless anything came in subsequent to the agenda? No. Uh, old business. There's no old business. New business. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Before you proceed, uh, this next item is brought before us by the firm that I work for. So I think it would be best if I excuse myself from the consideration of this. Okay. Well, without objection, then you may recuse yourself and abstain from this item. Uh, so item 7A, the residence is at, at Gateway Commons, 259 Payne Road. Here. Okay, the, um, the engineer for the client is, is here in the audience. Um, uh, on behalf of KGI Properties, uh, Sebago Technics requested that the Scarborough Sanitary District Board of Trustees allow the district to accept the sanitary sewer flows from the proposed residence at Gateway Commons located off of Payne Road and Haggis Parkway. This is a 288-unit apartment complex consisting of 12 buildings, a clubhouse, and, and an irrigation slash maintenance building. Uh, the requested flow is for 59,350 gallons per day of typical sanitary wastewater. The parcel was originally approved for a mixed-use development, including offices, a hotel, and a child care facility. The approved flow uh, for that development was 22,495 gallons per day, and the capacity and the capacity reserve fee associated with that flow uh, was paid at that time. Some of the proposed infrastructure for the original project was built prior to the project being abandoned, some of which will be reused for this project. Uh, the proposed sanitary sewer system includes 2,966 feet of 8-inch gravity sewer, 
23 manholes, 554 feet of 6-inch sewer services, 33 feet of 4-inch sewer service, and we'll utilize 520 feet of 8-inch gravity sewer and three manholes that were installed as part of the original project. All the gravity sewer, manhole, sewer services within the lot shall remain privately owned. I recommend approval with the following conditions. Um, the project is outside the original sewer, sewer service area. All 288 residential units, clubhouse, maintenance building are subject to the capacity reserve fee. This capacity reserve fee is based on single family uh, residential dwelling units and the addition of flow for the clubhouse. Any additional homes, apartment dwelling units, accessory units, or flow in excess of this are subject to additional approvals and capacity reserve fees. As previously noted, this parcel was originally approved for mixed-use development, including offices, a hotel, and a child care facility, in the approved, and its approved flow of 22,495 gallons per day, and the capacity reserve fee um, with this flow is paid at that time. Thus, 36,855 gallons per day of the requested 59,000 is subject to the district's capacity reserve fee. The current capacity reserve fee is $15.76 per gallon and is adjusted monthly based on the ENR construction cost index. Based on this fee, the total capacity reserve fee due would be $580,834.80. Uh, one uh, request the owner has had is if he could phase this project. There are uh, the, the last two buildings, um, they want to break off into a second phase, and um, so the, the project would be phased into, uh, into two. Uh, the first phase would consist of uh, the, uh, the ten buildings and the, the uh, clubhouse. The second phase would be the final two buildings, and uh, that's something I would recommend that we uh, do the proof. I'll go along with uh, the approved flow is for the 288 residential dwelling unit and 1750 gallons per day of typical sanitary waste for the clubhouse and maintenance building. Any flows in excess of the approved amounts are subject to additional approvals. The clubhouse and maintenance building will have privately owned water meters to measure the water consumption at these two locations. These meters will be as required by the district submeter program. This district will use these measured flows to calculate the usage at these two locations. A CCTV inspection of the installed sewer line is required at the completion of the project. The proposed project utilizes a private sewer system that will <coughs> remain private and the operation and maintenance of the system shall be the responsibility of the owner. Final plan shall be submitted to the superintendent for approval prior to issuance of the permits. Uh, a sewer extension permit is required. Complete application associated fee shall be submitted to the district prior to any sewer extension work. A sewer permit is required for each sewer service. A completed application and associated fee shall be submitted to the district at the time the permit is executed. Prior to the permit being executed, no type sewer work for the building shall be done. And then finally, professional survey electronic geo-reference CAD drawings, a stamp PDF of the CAD drawing and a stamp copy uh, of the final of the as built drawings be submitted to the district upon completion of the project. Thank you, Dean. Can we have a motion, please? So moved. A second? Second. Uh, question? Um, with regard to the phasing, um, the developer is intending to phase this now. Is the phasing shown on the drawings? Not on the drawings that we have. Um, I can <coughs> to update some drawings and provide them. As I say, they, they came to us. Uh, he, he requested this after the packet was sent out. Yeah. Um, well, I'm a little bit uncomfortable acting on this without the phasing being shown on the drawings. Um, and I think it's really important that the applicants understand that, uh, you know, the phase two of the project would be evaluated by us under whatever conditions the district was dealing with at the time. And there's no, uh, no assurance that a future board would approve phase two if we're dealing with issues or whatever. I mean, in other words, mm -hmm. the fact that they submit us a drawing with phase two on it uh, does not in any way 
indicate that there's an approval for phase two and that they're entitled to go ahead and proceed with that at a future point in time, they need to come back to us for complete approval of phase two at such time as they decide to pursue that. They would like, they were, they were requesting actually full approval just to phase the payment of the project uh, uh, for phase one, the first 10, 11 buildings, and then phase two, the final two buildings. So when, uh, because they're going to delay the construction of those two buildings. So uh, typically that's not, typically I don't think that's the way we have approved phasing. Usually we people have shown phases, but they've had to come back to us for approval for the next phase at which time they want to pursue it. Uh, because we we can allocate capacities to other projects that are active and paying the fees and so there's no reservation that is granted to a phase of a project. I mean correct me if I'm mistaken here but historically we have not allowed phase projects to be approved subject to the delivery of a check to the superintendent. It's been an item that has to come back to the board for approval of that project as if it were a, a project standing on its own and we'd have to review it at that point in time. So my concern would be that the owner is fully aware that that is the situation that they're in. That they have to bring that back to the board at the point in time that they want to proceed for us to uh, guarantee it. So they, they have no assurance other than our good intention that we can handle the project as of today, but two years from now or five years from now or eight years from now, whenever the time window is that they're going to proceed with the next phase, we'd have to reevaluate that based on whatever our conditions were at that point in time. Some of these phases can wait many, many years before uh, they get they get brought forward or they want to move to construction. So if there are any changes in rules, they have to abide by those. Um, so I guess I just want to be sure that uh, that the owner has that understanding because if they're thinking that we're going to approve this now and that's a, and, th and then it's up to them at their time frame to just proceed, that's that's typically not the way we have operated with phased projects. So where does that leave us? Mr. Chairman, would you like me to amend my motion to just approve ostensibly the first 11 buildings as quote-unquote phase one? Or do you want them to reapply with new plans? Uh, I guess I'd be happy with the motion being amended to discuss to describe phase one as Dave described it to us because that's not included in our report. In other words, the report on this item does mm -hmm. not include phasing. So that's not something that has been uh, presented, reflected in the minutes or presented in the discussion. So if, if Dave can give you the, if you have the right description for what phase one entails and make it subject to the receipt of a drawing of a, of a plan set that shows the phasing on the plan, I find it hard to believe we don't have a plan set here that doesn't have phase and shown on it. That's what the developer wants to do. Yeah. Well, it was uh, late to me, but there was some discussion of phasing, and then it was taken off the table, and then they um, uh, they just got brought back to me since we met. Uh, the phasing would be uh, the second phase would include building 1100 and building 1200. Plus garage 14. What's that? There's a garage in between those two buildings. Would that be part of that second phase? Yes. Garage, okay. not necessary. So instead of $580,834.80, the capacity reserve fee would be that minus those two buildings. If you could do a quick and dirty calculation, what that would be? I would rather not do a quick and dirty. You would not rather not do that. I'd okay. rather do the calculate, adjust it after the fact, as I'm sitting not being <coughs> okay. looking over my shoulder. All right. So, <laughs> um, how about this? How about I amend my motion to approve not the project that has been presented, but the project as described in phases 
and we're only approving phase one, which includes building 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, all the way through 10,000, plus the clubhouse and pool. In the maintenance building. Dave, it, would it be a good guess for me to say that this phasing thing came through to you today? No, it was um, probably uh, late last week. So Friday of last, last week. Maybe, maybe, right. was it this week? Friday. Either Friday or Monday. I, I guess I'm really uncomfortable approving that this way without us having the number to okay. be part of the, you know, these conditions of approval are conditions on the approval, they're binding on the applicants. Right. And if we don't have the right number, I guess I'm, I'm a little bit, actually I'm a little bit miffed. If we knew this was the end of last week, I don't know why we don't have a plan in front of us with phasing shown on it for us to act on and have the actual numbers for, uh, the board to include in the conditions of approval. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I could just clarify with Dave, you said they've asked about phasing mm -hmm. as the condition. Did they just want to bring that up? I mean, if we were to say no, would they like us to go forward with the approval of this? Yes, they would. I believe they would. As it's written. As it's written. This set. As presented. As presented. And I don't need to amend the motion. Do I have to well, withdraw the amendment? Honestly, I think that, in my opinion, if we approve the entire project, um, then they decide that they want to phase it. That will give them the opportunity to come back to us, present a, a plan, and revise the capacity reserve fee. In the meantime, they have to pay the full capacity reserve fee if they want to if they want to move forward. But it will be at their discretion. Otherwise, I think we should table this to the next meeting and have everything right for the conditions because these things can get pretty naughty going down the road, especially if ownership changes and the current developer sells the project to somebody else. We have somebody else coming through the door thinking that they've got certain approvals that really don't exist. I just want to avoid that at all costs. So I think if we approve the project in its entirety, uh, we can acknowledge the fact that the developer has expressed the desire to phase it and that we'll receive plans for that phasing and revised uh, impact capacity reserve fees at at that point in time and handle it that way. So, so be it. So I will, I will withdraw my amendment and stand on my original motion to approve the project so as presented. Um, so I would just like you to uh, like an amendment to be offered to indicate that the district uh, is willing to is willing to consider a request for phasing from the developer that when plans are submitted appropriately um, and the revised capacity reserve fees calculated based on those submitted plans that we'd be open to consideration of that. Yeah, for a subject of a re of a new approval. Yeah. Um, or an amendment of our action. Yeah. Okay. I will revise my amendment to the original motion to state that the board is willing to consider phasing if presented at a later time. Thank you. Is there a second to that amendment? Second. Okay. Any more discussion on the amendment? Aubrey. I have just a couple minor questions. So I noticed that there's a very limited amount of four-inch sewer in here. I understand that's going to continue to be private, but do you or staff have any concerns about four-inch sewer being in there in case you need to get in there someday? No. Okay. All right. Second question was um, related to the previous conversation. Is the developer prepared and ready to pay the full $580,000 fee? Okay. Great. And then my third question, more just out of, out of common, just, just general interest, are any of the units we're talking about here affordable housing? And you may not know the answer to that. that. Are any of them affordable housing? No, uh, before you talk, can you go sorry, introduce yourself, please? I shouldn't have called. Okay. No, you can do that. He just needs to talk to the mic. You should be asking as a board. Mm -hmm. I'm curious. It's a, it's an item of curiosity, but it's not an item of our of our bus uh, that should impact our business decision. Mm -hmm. It's but not you within our. Be asking you in the meeting, I don't think. Well, I I, I think to satisfy Arby's curiosity, I'll, I'll let Is I'll it, let. You cover. It could be a sidebar later. 
Yeah. I would agree. Uh, Richard Meek with Sebago Technics. I, I think it's in public, uh, in planning board public uh, record that the um, affordable housing um, provision was waived uh, in lieu, of, they, they did an in lieu fee for that that uh, provision, so there are no affordable housing units in this development. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Uh, so uh, first item would be to vote on the amended amendment to the motion. All those in favor of the motion of the amendment proposed by Nick, uh, please uh, indicate by raising your right hand. All right. All in favor. One abstention. Rob McSorley. All right. Now the main motion as amended. Those in favor? Anyone opposed? None opposed. One abstention. Rob McSorley. None opposed. Okay, great, thank you. Um, next item of new business is the uh, is the nine eight month nine month. Which budget summary are we on? Uh, eight eight, eight, eight month eight month budget summary. Recommend approval. So moved. For a second. Second. Moving and seconded to approve the eight-month budget summary. Uh, just note that we're still tracking positively, and that uh, indications are, without surprises, uh, for the remaining four months that we may finish. We may finish under budget, which would be uh, should be exciting. Um, all those in favor of the motion. I Question? Yes. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. I was just curious on the composting line item. Is that the line item that's also covering the new sludge hauling? Yes. All the sludge hauling costs are being reflected there. In there, including polymer use mm -hmm. and purchase? Okay. Thank you. So the sum of that is even though there's a large inc uh, overage on that line, that we are seeing savings in other lines that are offsetting it. Right. Um, and D David is going to give us a. Uh, full report on the overall cost effectiveness of the program, and he'll be looking at all the different expenses and where we've saved, what, what we've saved, and how things have played out in the end. Sure. Thank you. W when will that be coming in? Somewhere in June. Uh, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We we approved a one-year pilot, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, you know we're starting to come up to budget season right now, so I'll be taking a look at things anyway. Um, I'll probably get a pretty good feeling for it around uh, for the budget workshop. Good. And then uh, we'll talk a little bit, do a preliminary then, and then uh, for the final would be in June or July whenever we started the program. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of approving the uh, eight month budget summary? All in favor, none opposed. Okay, public comments. Uh, we have no members of the public present at this time. Trustee comments. Nick. I would like to congratulate Carl and Paul on installing new odor and level control systems. Uh, congratulations to Ken on his 40 years with the district. And thanks for another good month. Aubrey. Nicely said. So I also want to congratulate Ken on his anniversary. And if you've never met Ken, after spending quite a bit of time down in the lab doing some testing that Dave was kind enough to let me do, I would describe him as delightfully grumpy. <laughs> so, uh, so an anniversary to the district for tolerating him for 40 years also. And I mean that. He is delightful. He is a <coughs> funny, funny guy. But he would describe himself as grumpy. So congratulations, Ken. Um, I wanted to mention, uh, for those of you who follow such things, fatbergs were again in the news this week. So I would like to remind all those who received service from Scarborough Sanitary to not flush fat soil and grease, that not to rinse that down the sink, wipe it off, put it in the trash, and don't flush wipes of any kind, even if they say flushable. And then finally, mostly for the trustees' interest, um, just before this meeting I attended the Planapalooza 
um, final session. It's at the high school that might still be going on right now. It was the result of many, many intensive meetings this week to prepare for Scarborough's comprehensive plan <coughs> update. Really, really exciting, uh, and maybe I'll update the board, on, the trustees, on the results of that as it applies to, as or as it uh, pertains to sanitary sewer service west of the turnpike and how that may limit development in some areas of high potential. Thank you. Joe? I'd just like to echo uh, Nick and Audrey's comments and congratulate Ken not only on his 40 years, but his performance testing as well. And uh, thank you all for a great month and your continued efforts. Thank you. Rob? I would like to echo the same comments and uh, thank Ken for his great service for the last 40 years and also uh, for passing the uh, testing protocol. Jason. Same comments here. Congrats, Ken. Uh, really appreciate all of your efforts and dedication to the district in 40 years. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you. I'd like to thank the staff for their continued effectiveness in accomplishing upgrades to our systems. Uh, and uh, this translates into cost savings for us, so our staff is capable, competent, and willing to, willing to work and uh, that saves us uh, having to contract work out um, at additional expense to the district. Um, and so I guess I just want to continue to express my appreciation for their competency and their willingness to step up and uh, get these jobs done. Ken Welch was not always grumpy. <laughs> he was, uh, he was, uh, in, in earlier days, he was pretty quick-witted and, uh, and quite a hoot. Uh, great sense of humor, sometimes at other people's expense, but uh, very sharp-witted and a good guy. Uh, so I'm happy for him to have accomplished that. I worked with him for 10 years, had first-hand knowledge of his, uh, uh, of his quick-wittedness and sharp tongue and uh, was always a challenge to match wits with Ken. Oh, it still is. No doubt. Um, <laughs> and uh, I guess um, just following up on Aubrey's uh, comment with regard to develop development west of the Turnpike, um, I hope that the superintendent um, has plenty of conversation uh, with town staff regarding any any planning efforts for extending sewer to the uh, west of the turnpike um, I think we I think we had conversations concerning uh, concerning that uh, a couple of years back with regard to the running hill road uh, development potential that the town was looking at and um, I think it's going to be important that as they continue to discuss that that uh, uh, they have um, a good grasp of what the issues are from the district's perspective of how the costs have to be borne because I think that is going to be a real life um, challenge uh, for taking advantage of growth potential that they may be looking at um, in that area. And then I think along that same line might ask the superintendent if and when those conversations start to happen um, that we look at, uh, preliminarily look at our capacity issues at the treatment plant long term and what our own growth potential might be to accomplish to accomplish whatever, this, whatever the town's goals might materialize to be with regard to the comprehensive planning effort. And with that, um, the motion to adjourn will be in order. So moved. Second by Joe. All in favor of adjournment? None opposed. We are adjourned. <laughs>